Okay. All right, I'm going to be installing this uh, solar panel on top of my uh, truck here. Let me go over here. And so I've got a uh, solar generator that I'm working on uh, in the bed of the truck. But out here, I'm going to put this 100 watt energy panel on top of my Pioneer platform. So hopefully you can see that it feels like the camera's kind of pointed funky i don't know maybe that's good right there all right so with this uh, pioneer system this uh, rhino rack pioneer platform it has a couple of accessories and it uses this track system here here in the back and i kind of have this already started um but the nice thing is, is that these little slip outs here, and then uh, Rhino comes with this key, which allows you to loosen things pretty easy. I mean, obviously it's just a hex head, but that's gonna allow me to slide this underneath it. And I gotta get over here to this one. There. And I'm gonna loosen it quite a bit just so I can go past it. And I need to kind of see where it lies, but I'm gonna go past it a little bit and then come back on it, just because I wanna actually get a rivet uh, in the side of it here, coming down the side. So I am gonna uh, slip this up in there. And let me make sure you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, I feel like that's gonna be better. So yeah, I've just got this, uh, I've got this loose and I'm gonna use the, the lines on the truck and the lines on that to make sure I get this square. Not that that really matters because obviously it's not gonna be seen by anybody, but I would know it. I would know that it's not square. So I'm gonna take the time here to make sure I get this panel squared up and I'm going to go ahead and cinch this a little bit onto the panel just because I want to make sure that A, we have it nice and snug. When you're going 70, 80 miles an hour down the freeway, you don't want to have this thing come off, uh, cause a hazard to someone else or yourself or damage the panel, least of worries, but have it come off and actually strike another vehicle or something like that. So that looks pretty good using that line there. So I'm just going to snug these down along the top. And that, yeah, that seems to be good there. Okay. All right. So now I know that that giving you that front windscreen like that now this little trim that goes in here is really just to help quiet everything down the less gaps and stuff you have for wind to whistle through the better um, so i know that's kind of the purpose of that not that it would add any weatherproofing because it won't but it will definitely provide a little wind no whistling and stuff okay so that's that part's done what what i want to do was just to make sure there's nothing going in the side is i'm going to put a rivet probably just right here that's a little little less than halfway i guess i could do two but i'm trying to just make sure nothing can come along the side and, and whip it up uh, to to blow it up so so I'm gonna bring you over here to have you see that okay so now I kind of got you right in front of me here but I think I'm just gonna put a put a rivet right in here um, and I can't remember what size am I gonna do I think I'm gonna do a, probably that three sixteenths yeah, so we're going to go with that. 
and I'm not too worried about drilling a hole A in the panel and B in the uh, in the roof. Um, and that's pretty much all it's going to take is just a little hole like that. And then since that's going to be a shallow one, I need to pick a shallow, shallow, shallow 3 16 That'll probably do it there. Let me see. Mm, hole might need to be a little bigger. Or deeper, one or the other. Let's see. There we go. Okay. And I actually want to put a washer on this first anyway to help increase that surface area there. And then I'm just going to cinch that down. Okay. So that's going to provide some lateral support in addition to the front support that I have there. I'm going to turn around and do it here on the opposite side. So let's go ahead and shut the camera off for a second, turn it around, and we'll pick right back up. Okay, so I think we're good right there. I'm just going to kind of repeat the process just right here. Okay, and the washer. You know, one of those stubby three sixteenths. Okay, we'll go ahead and rivet that down. If you don't have a rivet gun, I highly, highly recommend it, uh, especially for metal works like this. You just you, you don't know how many different times you'll actually use that when you have it. So anyway, and then uh, to get them out, all you have to do is drill that center and they're out. So that's it's not a permanent situation, although it's a lot more permanent than a screw that could back out or rattle out. Uh, so anyway, I like it for that. Okay, so the back's a little different. It, it's, it, it took a little more doing uh, simply because... The, the way that this panel is designed, it's a, it's a flat panel that actually will flex. It won't bend in half or fold or anything like that, but it will, um, you know, it will uh, bend and it's flexible. The problem is, is that this little, uh, th that's where kind of the electronics meet everything there. And I, um, you know, it, it doesn't allow you to get a lot of purchase on that, on that panel because of that, because you're, you're, um, you can't slide this same uh, bar over top of it like I did for the front. So what I did was, I'll move this back a little bit so you can see. I cut this piece of plastic here, and I, I notched it. To where it's going to fit right over top of that. Now, my thought today as an improvement to the system is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and put some rivets right in there uh, in those two spots, just so I I know it's not going to go anywhere. I didn't need to do this in the front just because I have so much. Uh, I have so much space in the front. It wasn't necessary like that here in the back. So, so I'm gonna go ahead and put two of those stubby uh, 3 16 inch um, these guys in those, and then that will. And I and I, you know, to be honest with you, I could probably end with that. I would probably don't need the bar on there but i think it, it'll just be more uniform that way okay and then let's get this guy over here 
because you know the, to be honest those four rivets plus the bar in the front a combination of those two things are going to hold that in there perfect so if you're looking to add a little panel now why would i put a panel on my roof well there's several reasons one i actually have a solar generator mounted in the bed of my truck so this this will just allow me to charge that generator when i'm not using it it'll allow it to charge it in the bed of the truck with the power of the solar energy so it's kind of like a big win for us that way because i'm not i'm not utilizing any of that uh you know i don't have to take it in the house i don't have to bring an extension cord out so i can charge that up the other thing you could do with this is you could put a, a trickle charger now you're seeing me i'm i'm snugging that up up as tight as i can get it and then i'm going to go ahead and tighten these down so now i have that little plastic piece that i cut for this and i have those rivets in there i just i feel like that's going to be a, a really good combination now i can see that rivet is kind of pulling it up right here a little bit and i it's kind of to be expected but i i still feel like the rivet and this pressure down on it's going to be good so again if you don't have a solar panel on your roof um, you got a camper shell you can do it now i also put these bars up here so i could actually lay stuff flat over top of them and these also have a track so you can use even these guys these hooks can come out of here and go in this track uh, and you could put stuff over top of this panel without having to worry about damaging the panel so anyway that's uh, that's kind of how i planned on doing that go ahead and slide these back in and I found, where is my, right in front of my face, a little set of needle nose. It helps that go in pretty easy. All right, so the mounting part is done. I just need to do the um, hookup, so the electrical part. So, and I already know this is the negative here. And the positives on this side. I gotta run that back. So I I have the the I have the wires already plumbed from the bottom, and I have a video on my channel that can show you that solar panel uh, hooked up down, or not sorry, the solar generator that I've hooked up down below. Um, so this is just me wiring it up from the bottom okay so really i'm gonna have to do that one somewhere about there we'll do this side since i'm close to here and let's just make sure i have the camera set up looks like looks like we're on it let me see if i can see that yep okay all right, so we're just gonna stay live. I'm not gonna cut the cut the uh, channel, so I can get these two together. Really, right about there. I don't have much room to spare, do I? So I might need to see how much of this I can save. Got a crimp right here. Yeah, it's right through the middle of that. All right, and I might need my knife real quick. So hang on just a second. I gotta get my knife so I can split that. Split that. So hang on just two seconds here. Okay. All right. So I didn't. I didn't uh, leave myself a ton of wire, which you know is kind of a rookie mistake, but it's gonna be enough. Just usually I like to have a little extra. Uh, I'm using these uh, crimps, but butt crimps like that and I like to do um, you know the uh, color-coded ones these are yellow so I know I need to go in the yellow slot this helps take some of the guesswork out and then try to get it all the way 
in there and then I went ahead and threaded on the uh, threaded on the um, uh, heat shrink just for waterproofing and I'm gonna crimp this back one first and come up to this front one and even go right here in the middle all right now i like to give a visual inspection and also kind of pull on it i'm going to crimp that one more time right here in the middle just to remove any doubt okay so those feel pretty mashed together i've got my uh one of my favorite tools in the world here with me i think i don't see it right now so favorite that i can't keep track of it hang on two seconds Let's see if i can't get that okay all right so i've got this uh little mini blowgun it's a a lot of different things in one but it will do heat shrink like nobody's business uh, flameless which is nice so it's just the heat and these crimps that I use have their own bit of heat shrink on them uh, so there's that but I always like to then go over top of them especially if I'm in an outdoor situation now, especially up here on top of the roof rack, I know this is going to get wet. And if I can uh, do any measure of prevention, keep shorts and stuff out, plus uh, clean it up a little bit. Um, so you can see that thick, thick, thick coat of that. Now you almost have to wait just a second to let that cool, because if you try to bring your heat shrink up, it'll actually shrink on it where it's hot um, I think we're good so I'm gonna bring that one on first I'm only gonna go about three quarters of the way because then I've got this other one that'll go over that so you can see I get a nice tight seating on that feel good about that being watertight then this one I can come this way just the opposite direction go over top of that and shrink that down so again really triple protection two heat shrinks on that and the crimp itself has its own heat shrink so let's go ahead and move to the other side uh, where we can do the positive cable and there we go Okay, so reason number like 28 why you need a solar generator in your truck could be just because when you're filming and videoing yourself doing stuff, your phone battery dies and so you have to plug into something. So I am plugging into, you probably can't see it because it's on here, but I'm plugging into the solar generator in the bed of my truck. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just about finished up on top anyway, but I've got the... Uh, wires prepped here for our um, deal but I do need you know, and I just let's see if I can fish that out of there all right there's that and then I need a couple of heat shrinks from over here let's see if I can reach those okay yep all right so we'll go with a couple of red ones this go around and there we go all right so now um i'll get the uh, heat shrinks on first okay get it on this black wire here Go ahead and get the uh, crimp on here and come up this way 
I need to get the heat shrink on first. Okay. All right. And then we'll come back through here. Get that crimp started. There. Once again, we're going yellow. Okay, and that feels good to me. And then we'll go ahead and get our heat shrink started. See how that just glows. Uh, it's great for soldering. I've got little solder tips with this. Uh, this little mini torch. I have actually had to sweat a couple of pipes. It took a long time, but uh, in a pinch I had a little repair I needed to make and it would have been longer to go home and get everything than just to use what I had on my belt. And I do keep this one in my belt, in my truck. I like to see where that turns from that shiny to all black. See how that change to black because that tells me there's no air in between that and same thing there and it actually acts as a little bit of a glue um, if you've ever tried to take one of these apart these heat shrinks aren't just like shrink on there this this kind at least actually acts like a little bit of hot glue so I really like these they are waterproof but you heard my explanation before. I do like to, uh, I do like to use the secondary ones to go over top of it just to provide that much more protection. And then also, like I say, it helps clean it up a little bit. And I'll go over this about three quarters of the way back with the heat. Now this stuff shrinks a lot quicker. It's a lot thinner but it does shrink up that is for sure okay let's grab the stuff coming from down below same thing i'm going to go back over it three quarters of the way right about there halfway maybe straighten that out a little bit see if I can hold it to where I'm not gonna burn my finger could always use my pliers but nobody's ever accused me of being really smart especially not my wife Okay, uh, you can see it suck right up. Give us a nice solid deal. All right, I feel like that's good. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up here and then meet you down below. We'll show, uh, show how this all works, but I've now got the uh, solar panel mounted up here i've got rivets in the sides for lateral support i've got the uh, pioneer this rhino rack pioneer system helping with the assist there i just don't think that's going anywhere and this is going to provide me 100 watts it usually pushes about five amps of power which means i can charge a 100 amp hour battery in a day up here especially in arizona so uh look forward to that i'm going to get down here and show you the solar generator will be done for the night Okay, so now that we have the panel, these are the uh, wires coming up from up top. I'm going to take a little bit here and, and uh, clean those up and get them snugged up against the side. But uh, just so you can see, this is the actual power box. 
This is the uh, Power Box 2500 or Cargo Power Box 2500. So uh, it's a homemade do-it-yourself kit. I have a 2500 watt uh, inverter right here that's uh, going to take a uh, lithium battery. And as you can see, I've got that charged up. This battery monitor is going to show you everything you need to know about it. Um, I am charging my phone with this, so that is the draw that's on here, and you can see that little teeny tiny draw, nearly 2 amps and 23, 24 watts uh, to charge up my phone, but it, it could do that for 55 hours of just sitting there charging this phone. So why do you want a power box in the back of your truck? Well, that's just one of the reasons. I have several uh, power tools back here, compressors. I have saws, I have in my toolbox here, I've got multi-tools, all kinds of stuff that I literally can run and use my uh, tailgate as my workbench, not have to worry about being indoors, not have to worry about finding an outlet, it's all right here. So I built this uh, solar generator to have in the back of my pickup truck. I've got it secured here to the bed uh, with a couple of uh, sheet metal screws and powered up by that uh, solar panel on top. That's just gonna help juice it up, uh, keep it going. On the inside here, um, you can see that's where I have the charge controller, that uh, Voyager charge controller in there, and then I've got this uh, lifetime. Uh, this is a mini edition of their 100 amp hour battery. Um, it's it's uh, all in there inside this uh, junction box. Uh, let's see. And keep that clamp shut tight and then uh, I have the uh, inverter mounted on the outside because that's what's going to get hot uh, when you're running things so anyway that's why you want it that's why you want the panel this just gives you a lot of possibilities of things that you can do with your uh, power box I took it out in the desert we watched movies using a projector uh, all that so you know all kinds of fun that you can have Really, anything that you need to power up with a power up to 2500 watts, you can do that with this. So, anyway, um, hope you enjoyed this install of the panel. Um, I have several installs and do it yourself projects on the channel, so please feel free to surf around, like, and subscribe, and share as many videos as you care to do. Appreciate you watching. Catch you next time on Jeff's Gadgets and Gear. Goodbyes.